26 March 1957, Ghana, formerly known as the Gold Coast, gained its independence from the British colonial rule. Today, 61 years on, we will find out how well Ghana has fared through its journey of independence. In the UK, Ghana's 61st independence celebrations were hosted by the Ghana High Commission at the London Jumeirah Carlton Hotel. His Excellency the High Commissioner of the Republic of Ghana, Papa Ousu Ankoma, and his wife, along with the staff of the Ghana Mission, were in attendance. The celebrations has been themed Ghana Beyond Aid. Joining in the celebrations were a cross-section of Ghanaians from across the UK including representatives of Ghanaian traditional chiefs, representatives of the various Ghanaian political parties in the UK, community leaders and groups. Independence Day celebration was deemed with the presence of members of the diplomatic corps, UK government officials and friends of Ghana. His Excellency, the High Commissioner along with his Deputy High Commissioner, and senior staff at the mission lined up to welcome the guests to the celebration.
baby, baby, move on and be a I am a I baby, baby, move on and be
Aho ma chingu nya wuti di di mo na ma bre Ena na dream hande nya wode Enche me do na fin so si me jaso Tutum puma ni mbe bi adate yenka Fada di lumba ni mbe si sobo Mi sum ya kasa na minu mye ni fimbu ya pa Inti na me dogu yo Oma men kasa kwa ni wu bune ni ote masye Give you an hour, she dare me one pack it, pack it, and come into sadness on the bura, and me grandma and neighbor. I'm home at Chia, that was so, yeah. Crazy, baby, cause I give you my heart and my body. Whenever you need love, call me. I will give it to you six in the morning. I'll be your hobby. I will do anything for the body. So, God love you, dead, dead, dead.
the national anthems of Ghana and the UK were played. After which, Mr. Robert Dixon, Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Head of West Africa Department, gave a speech on behalf of the UK government. For us in the UK, Ghana is special. Uh, it's a relationship that is special. It's a relationship that goes back a long way. Uh, and the relationship in many ways is unique. Uh, it is a deep and sustained partnership built on history, ties that bind, ties of people, of family, of, uh, of friendship, and of values. Uh, and that is the real substance of, of international relations. And when you have all of that, you have a special partnership. Uh, it's also, as I say, built in many ways on, on personal ties, and personal ties that really matter. There are a quarter of a million or so uh, uh, Ghanaians, uh, or people of Ghanaian descent in the United Kingdom. And they are a huge, significant, and important part of this community. Uh, and um, uh, you see Ghanaians and people of Ghanaian descent active uh, in parliament, in business, in fashion, in sport, in media. And you can decide which is the ranking order. Uh, but as I say, this is a relationship that's be built upon shared values and, and ties that that bind. Uh, but the exciting thing about this relationship between the United Kingdom and Ghana is not so much the past, uh, it's about the present and it's about the future. Uh, and that is a message that I would like to, on behalf of the UK government, stress, stress tonight. Uh, and it is a, an intensity of a relationship that we saw when His Excellency the President visited just before Christmas and I'm sure we will see again during the context of the Commonwealth Summit coming up here in, in London. And as Ghana looks beyond aid, uh, and as the United Kingdom looks beyond the European Union, that shared focus needs to be on the future and on that partnership, and a partnership that matters and works at so many, at so many levels. One of the key challenges for us is focusing the UK private sector and our long-standing development efforts on the future, on a future beyond aid, towards a, a partnership that works for both of us. A partnership that will see, we hope, investment in infrastructure, in agriculture, in manufacturing, creating jobs, employment and opportunities, building a supply chain, a value chain in Ghana that will be good for both Ghana and indeed for the United Kingdom. And the UK partnership in security will remain and we hope will grow. And as we have seen challenges in Burkina Faso over the course of the last few days, that is a partnership that will remain uh, important. Your Excellency, I will stop there, but simply to say very many congratulations to you, Your Excellency. Very many congratulations to the Republic of Ghana. Uh, uh, so please, ladies and gentlemen, raise your, ta raise your glasses. It's my honour to propose the toast. Uh, to the President of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Kufuado. Uh, nice to meet you, sir. Cheers. Followed on, the High Commissioner delivered the Independence Day address on behalf of the President of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome all of you to this 61st Independence Anniversary Celebration of Ghana. And let me welcome especially too from Ghana the presiding bishop and about six bishops of the Methodist Church Ghana 
that is here on a very special visit to honor the missionaries who helped set up the Methodist Church in Ghana some 180 years ago. It is a pleasure to have you, Most Reverend Titus Awachi Pratt. Last year, unfortunately, I did not arrive in London in good time to host you during the 60th independent anniversary celebration. But I must say that I'm happy to be here at this particular time. As a country, we are proud of the progress that we have made. We can now say that we are a peaceful and stable multi-party constitutional democracy. Since 1992, when Ghana decided to build a future based on democracy, it has not looked back. We have had six fiercely contested elections where on three occasions we have had changes in government from opposition to government. And the last one was just uh, December 2016 when the people of Ghana elected a new government under the leadership of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. And I'm honored to have been appointed by the president to be Ghana's representative to the court of St. James's. Since the government of President Akufuado took office last year, January, it has begun honoring major pledges that he made to Ghanaian people. And the last academic year commencing September 2017 saw the commencement of a free secondary school policy which had an additional 90,000 students gaining access to secondary education. Overall, investment in education continues to take the biggest slice of our national budget, about some 20%. When I also see the minister responsible for higher education in Ghana, Professor Kwesi Yanka, here. Prof, you're welcome. <laughs> to create the workforce, that meets our country's long-term needs. We are also reforming our school's curricula to place greater emphasis on science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and also technical and vocational skills. The government has made the creation of jobs and self-employment opportunities for the youth a key multi-sector priority. And among some of the initiatives taken in this regard is the establishment of the Nation Builders Corps. And as the President announced in his address this morning in Ghana, this year, hope to employ 100,000 young people to assist the delivery of public services in the areas of health, education, sanitation, and agriculture, as well as boost the efforts of the Ghana Revenue Authority in collecting taxes. Other youth-focused job creation and self-employment promotion initiatives introduced since 2017 include, among others, planting for food and jobs and digital marketing and entrepreneurship programs. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
the president of Ghana has articulated a very bold vision of a Ghana beyond aid. And last November, he was here to deliver a paper on Africa beyond aid. Africa, blessed with natural and human resources, such that <laughs> as a continent, by this time, we should have been able to end our dependence on foreign aid in our national budget and expenditures if we are to have the right mix of leadership, planning, and prudent management and use of its resources. Ghana Beyond Aid does not mean that Ghana does not accept aid or not request aid. <laughs> what it means is that as a country, we should ensure that we are able to raise enough resources by ourselves locally to implement our development agenda. And as the president often says, no one should expect someone from another country to come and build their country for them. A Ghana beyond aid involves us actively mobilizing our human and financial resources, both home and in the diaspora, towards achieving a common national goal. It involves mobilizing and leveraging domestic savings and revenues transparently with resolute efficiency and accountability. Government has therefore embarked on a campaign to build a new ethic and culture of tax responsibility and compliance among Ghanaians, while at the same time it's modernizing and boosting the tax collection capacity to generate more revenue to meet our development needs. Most importantly, government has also stepped up its effort to curb corruption and waste in public administration. An independent office of special prosecutor has been established by an act of parliament with bipartisan support, with the office being assured of the requisite tools and resources to give dedicated attention to investigating and prosecuting cases of corruption by public office holders, including past and present politicians, and recovering the proceeds of corruption. The Auditor General's Office has also been encouraged to exercise its power of imposing and enforcing surcharges against public officials who are found in the course of an audit to have made unauthorized expenditures. Ghana Beyond Aid means Ghana is open for business. Government continues to implement measures to stabilize and improve the macroeconomic environment for business and investment. Already, the fiscal deposit, deficit has been brought down from 9.3 as of December 2016 to 5.6% of our GDP as of December 2017, and government continues work to reduce it further. Interest rates, which hovered around 25% in late 2016, is about 10.5% as of last month. Last year, 2017, the Ghanaian economy grew by 7.9% from a rate of 3.6% in 2016. Ghana is indeed 
open for business. And we welcome all who wish to take advantage of the immense opportunities for business and investment that our nation offers. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when we say we are open for business, it's not only foreign direct investment. The invitation is also to our Ghanaian compatriots who have now made their home outside Ghana, including those of you in the United Kingdom. And since assuming duty as High Commissioner, as I have traveled across the length and breadth of the United Kingdom to engage with many different Ghanaian communities, I've come to appreciate the significant strides Ghanaians are making in the United Kingdom. Of course, we have a lord in the House of Lords of Ghanaian descent. And in the House of Commons, we have three members who are of Ghanaian descent, one of whose mother is here. And we applaud them. Indeed, for the past few years, almost every year, in the Queen's Honours List, you have British citizens of Ghanaian descent receiving honours. And some of them are here. And just last year, in June, when I went to present my letters of credence, to Buckingham Palace, Her Majesty the Queen herself introduced to me the first black equerry of the Queen, I think Major Chumisi Ankara, a British citizen of Ghanaian descent. But in a quest to have a Ghana beyond aid, government is putting in place policies that will convert financial remittances to Ghana into development capital. Instead of sending monies to our families and our communities, let the money be available for investment to provide jobs, employment for our young young people. But government recognizes the substantial contribution that diasporas make to our country. The regular remittances you send to your loved ones and your families go a very long way indeed. Not only to them, but the economy as a whole. And your contribution also goes beyond these remittances because your skills acquired outside the country should be used to support the new Ghanaian agenda. As I say, at the time when we were fighting for political independence, many of those who led the independence struggle could be described as diasporas. However, now, if you look at the range of skills that diasporas have acquired, if we were to use the same commitment that our forebears had in fighting independence into contributing to the economy, Ghana beyond aid, and Africa beyond aid will be achievable. As a country, we work to deepen our democracy. And we work even to deepen our democracy to let mayors be directly elected, not appointed by government. Our host country, the United Kingdom, has been great support. In our democracy, and also in our economy. And the UK 
is Ghana's biggest trade partner. The UK has also remained the most consistent and largest partner in the area of trade and economic relations. And it is our hope that in moving Ghana beyond aid, our ties in this area will continue to thrive and grow to our mutual benefit. However, emphasize the point made by Rob, in our desire to move Ghana beyond aid, we call for more UK private sector investment, particularly in the area of infrastructure, agriculture, and ICT. Emphasis is also on partnerships and joint ventures which involve skill and technological transfer from the UK to Ghana. It is now my pleasure to invite you to lift your glasses and drink lustily with me. <laughs> Toast to the Queen and the United Kingdom and the strengthening of bilateral relations between the United Kingdom and Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now please welcome to stage a young poet from Ghana, sir. Ghana, 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 oh say, yeah. yeah. We are from that crossroads of dreams, that market of nine moons where it all began. We are the center of the earth. We hold all the worlds together, that indeed we have arrived at this crossroads of certain uncertainties. And so at this crossroads of certain uncertainties, we can only measure our footsteps forward. For obviously there is enough room for all of us beyond all of these visual stumbling thoughts, such that our young ones will grow with keen eyes to snatch all our hopes from these waves of pessimism. Our young ones will grow with a daring to seize our moments at the crooked junctions of lame history. Our excesses, we know, we have measured them in full thought. So save our excesses for nature's excuses. Our life only resumed at 60 yesterday. Today, we take a bold step forward, committed to stoking our own fires, to cooking what we grow, to grow knowing enough to show the world that we have learned from our mistakes and learned our better examples here to spread to the rest of the world. Mind you, white teeth are no guarantee against bad breath. Good intentions alone are not enough, but posterity will be here long enough. All of you will be here long enough to judge this moment of decisive action. And Napaye, Awoye, Uwa wo boni a wote ube dinka. Nemu uwa wo pa. Ye biye wo su timo su fura wo mama. O mama gana. Ye funu kron kron wo 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 a de shepon. Ene. Gana muntie. Gana muntie. Gana muntie. E wya sinyine kuwa be sheye. She. En kroma had a dream. The rest have put in some steam, but today Nana is here to redeem. And you and I have no option than to be part of this team to make it work. What the Ekakra? Made the Ekakra? Potugum, ni Shiguma, Ghana, a Bayer Krabeshe. Man shaking term made now a new one. Fafaha, Nafuraha, Ochenaha, a bomb near the Fra Amagana, 
waji nedja e wo be jem if you saw mama gana there or ye bibre mu hima so no etitretu no ho atwe there ono odi sikapudu na jije ne macro gana muntie e bre ni ni wa ye krado ma ye krado afen ye di fie ba ko obi ntumi fa ne sabenkum enchre ye sebe the creator causes his food at the center and sends it to the rest of the world a child who will live long needs no child. Or ba or better no, your money summa. In Penimbe Company, some a Mofra Betuan and Sam Ghana beyond aid. We are not afraid to take this step. Our shadows would find their places on the walls. Ghana this year, we are singing a Sremano Casa Manuato. Thank you. One, two, three, cut the cake! Round of applause for his and and Rob Dixon. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. As a Guinean in the diaspora, we contribute to the welfare of Guineans spiritually. And for an occasion like this, celebrating our 61st independence celebration of Thanksgiving, we support one another and we thank God for his goodness and mercy unto us. Our message to Guineans is that continue doing the good work that God has put you here to do. Each and every one of us must be selfless in our commitment to whatever responsibility we are given here in order to raise the image of Ghana in the diaspora. Bless God for the 61st um, year God has brought us into. And what I want to say, let us come together as a people. Together we can stand. Together we can be anything we want to be. And let us put every division aside and see God do some great in our life. I pray that you and I will hold the fort and make God great in our lives when the nation is concerned. belongs to all of us. When we come to the diaspora, we unify. But in Ghana, the same message is what I want to give to all citizens. So we need, we all need to unify so that Ghana can be a beacon on the mountain. I want to wish all Ghanaians uh, happy independence and I think we have to share in the government's aim of Ghana Beyond Aid because we can do it. We are the people who are going to build our country and we need to help such that our people will benefit from the resources we have. We have what it takes to do that. And I wish all Ghanaians a happy and prosperous independence celebration that will go beyond Ghana for aid and secondly, we are a great nation for great people and we have to start doing great things as our forefathers did. I think it's uh, fitting for us to say Afishapa or a happy birthday to our beloved country Ghana. Ghana has gone through a great deal of uh, challenges but we still are move, moving on. So today, on behalf of the Methodist Church, Ghana, we wish Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu and the government all the very best. And especially that as we are looking for Ghana beyond aid, we are praying for its success and we also be part of the uh, actively working to make sure that, that that is achieved. Because we know it is achievable. Wherever there is a will, 
the way is there. And so we wish Ghana so well, and all Ghanaians in the diaspora, please be law-abiding and remember that home is home. Come invest at home and help us build a robust economy for ourselves and for our descendants. Thank you and God bless our nation, Ghana. Ours is to ensure that we open up the business space to create more businesses, to create more jobs uh, for Ghanaians. And uh, we definitely do embrace the efforts made by the diaspora also in bringing investment to Ghana, both directly and indirectly. And on this um, 65th anniversary, I'd like to say congratulations to every Ghanaian everywhere. I think there's a lot more work to do. It's with excitement that we take the challenge and turn into a great opportunity to transform our country into a great place. So I'm happy to be here today to support the High Commission. This is a time that we all have to congratulate ourselves and celebrate of the happiness, the joy that is created in the country. Education is a one area. The youth, you know, let's say, you know, even health. And then, you know, um, employment is one very important thing which the High Commissioner also made reference to. These are things that those of us in the diaspora must all endeavor and work assiduously and to promote the goodwill among all of us so that we can achieve the best in life. So many happy anniversary to everyone, all Ghanaians, and we have to celebrate. And it's a wonderful time for all of us. I'm super excited to be a Ghanaian and uh, we're celebrating our 61st independence anniversary and I want to tell all Ghanaians around the world, especially those back home and in the diaspora that um, Ghana is blessed, continue to support Ghana, go home and do business and God bless our homeland Ghana. I wish uh, Ghana all the best and pray for guidance, protection, and, and tolerance, patience, and intelligence in guiding everybody. And uh, we pray for our mother Ghana against crime, corruption, and everything. And wish everybody all the best and uh, many happy returns for Ghana. Nemse <laughs> Epse <laughs> Na, uh, na, um,